Believe it or not, your tires are trying to communicate with you and tell you how your car is handling on the road. Pinto the dog and I are here to tell you how to read and listen to those things. Howdy guys, I'm Otto and it's Jason, that's my helper Pinto the dog, and this is going to be video one of a series of videos on suspension setup and some tuning tips. So let's get started, we're going to start where the rubber meets the road. So I think it's important to actually mention at this particular moment that uh, hopefully in a year or so if you're catching this video from when it's posted, we're past the current situation we're in now. We're in the coronavirus uh, quarantine lockdown. I live in Southern California and we're in a mandatory stay home type of situation here. So. I just want to kind of say it was hard to get out here because I felt like this was a frivolous thing to be talking about and doing and sharing, but then I thought that this is a perfect time to just go out and share with you guys. I have this wonderful opportunity to and the time to come out here and uh, I'll, I'll try to make some content and just kind of kind of make all of our time in front of our in our houses or locked down um, a little bit better and hopefully in a few months this this will all be something that we we'll look back on and go, you know, well that was tough but we did good, you know, as a group, so sending out some good thoughts to everybody. The rear wheel on this car right now is an 18 by 11 um, with a, a decent back space. It makes the stand, so that's a very important thing to me on cars, and it works well. Now, these are the BF Goodrich G-Force Comp 2 all-season tires. Now, uh, if you haven't watched the, the test drive video, go watch that video, but I'll incorporate lots of footage in this one uh, to explain what I'm talking about here. Now, this tire is what they call an all-season, just a general purpose sports tire. It's a tread wear of 400. Now, to give you, a, uh, if you don't know, the basics of that. So let's just say the softest compound would be a zero. That's like basically chewing gum on a tire race slick. Uh, like a DOT, like a, a road legal race tire, hovers around 40 to 80 rating, tread wear rating. So super soft, wears out fast. These are a 400. So that is designed to get you a 50,000 mile uh, range out of these things, long life, but yet what I was going for when I picked these was a tire that would give me a lot of miles and as you guys saw, I, I was sporty, I didn't do anything crazy, I did a first gear medium uh, burnout, not real aggressive and these tires stood up to that pretty great so there was no real, I mean, damage to them at all. And also, like I mentioned in that, I actually want to go a little bit wider to give you a quick download on how tire sizes work. So we have 275-40-ZR-18. So the way that works is 275 is millimeters wide at the carcass right here. So that's that's what that width is. So obviously the, the larger that is, the wider that tire is. And then the 40 is the percentage, the ratio of the sidewall. So a larger number here means a taller sidewall. A shorter, a smaller number means a shorter sidewall. So low profile tires. So this, a 275-30 would be a super low profile. Now, I don't particularly like that. If I had a low profile tire up on that road that we test drove this on, I would have a flat tire <laughs> and have much less um, forgiveness in the suspension. I think this car needs a little bit taller sidewall so the tire the ideal tire size I'm looking for would be a 285 maybe 295 40 ZR 18 since it's 18 inch so 18 is obviously the wheel so and then the ZR the Z is the speed rating so uh, I'm not going to go into all of that right now but just so Z is a higher speed rating so you get like 140 mile per hour 150 mile per hour I think is what Z means and then it goes up from there and down from there as well so you got to keep all of those things in mind when you get a tire so 
Am I happy with these so far? I I'm actually extremely happy. They did really well in the rain. And that was the whole point of this. I wanted these to be the break-in tire, the, the, but it has a, the similar shape and, and carcass design as the G-Force comp to the sport comp tire. So the one with the much lower tread wear rating. So these at 400, long lasting, not maximum grip. That's not what they're designed for. I knew that going into it and they're performing great. They offer a like actually a surprising amount of performance and were very predictable and when they would lose grip was very gentle. I could feel it coming. So it was actually, these are, they were proving to be a great tire. There's a lot going on here and your car can communicate, not just in the handling features of it while you drive through the tires, but after the drive and between drives, your tires can actually tell you a lot about what your car is doing, even if you might not feel it behind the wheel. So let's run through a few of those. So now as you can see here, I have the tires on the Mustang with a bit of a stagger. Now that's not an ideal for a track day car specifically, but this isn't just a track day car. This is my hot rod project. This is a cruiser, this is a long range thing. And I wanna go have some fun with it. Ideally, you would do what they would call a square stance where you pick the same size wheel and tire all, for all four corners of your vehicle. Um, this vehicle I think would just look awful with that. I've, I've seen some really well built 71, 73s with square stance and just the body shape just I think this nails it. Check this out, don't you think? I think this car has a beautiful stance with this setup here. Let's talk a little bit about what these, how to read your tires. Now, I was explaining a minute ago about the size and how they relate. So we have a 275, 40, 18 in the rear. In the front, we have a 255, 40. I think these are 40s, let's double check. Yes, 255-40ZR17 in the front. Um, and you could see the direct relationship right here. I like this squared off sidewall here, and this is the reason why I wanna go with a 285 or a 295 in the rear. So you can see how this, this carcass stretches a little bit on the 11 inch rim that I have here. And this is a nine inch rim in the front. So uh, I kinda like this squared off. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, I like that kind of side profile a little bit better. So, check this out. This is how much your tires are communicating to you, not just in grip and feel and how the, the vehicle feels as you're like attacking a corner or just even driving straight. So first off, when you get out and you first make a really aggressive run in your vehicle and you're turning hard and you're cornering hard and you're really pushing it, the edges of the tires do a lot to communicate with what the suspension and how the car is handling that. Now, the first thing you look at is the wear on the shoulder. So right along the shoulder here, you'll see that this is just turning the corner towards the edge. And in the old days, when you were auto, when I was autocrossing, you would put shoe polish there. And if you wore the shoe polish too far down the sidewall, you had to up your tire pressure. And that's the quick way to check your tire pressure. It's not just a matter of, you know, it's easy to check if you way over, over inflate or under inflate because the thing just plows like a pig or rides really harsh. So. What I did was I kept lowering this. So this is, now I, ha I keep notes up here on my board. I ran the Canyon with the front at 37 cold. So 37 pound PSI cold pressure gave me this and it's darn near perfect. You can see I just, you know, and I cornered hard. <laughs> this is not, this wasn't just playing around. You guys watch this video. Uh, I, I pushed the car harder and harder and harder and harder. Um, and the road was rough, it wasn't ideal, but it did great. So you can see, I could have actually gone maybe 36, but 37, I'm gonna leave it there for now because it was, it felt amazing, and look at that wear. It rolled the edge, just, just turned the corner. You don't wanna be running down here, there's no traction, it's not an off-road vehicle where you actually use the sidewall as traction. You don't wanna be down here, that's bad for your tire, uh, and you don't get good traction. Now that's something that we'll cover in suspension stuff in a minute. read the sidewall with the rears as well, but they don't have camber gain or camber uh, loss like the front end as it goes through its suspension travel because there's an A-arm or articulate, much more articulation. There's, there's much more at play to generate that, but you still read the sidewalls on the rear. Now on the rear, you could see I actually didn't roll 
the side, the, the corner that much. And that that's because these, these tires don't gain camber, you know, and so that's important. Now, what I learned from this is that I ran the Canyon at 32 PSI, so much, much lower. So that is another example uh, to, to share with you that you can't just square up your, your pressure. It's got to, you've got to dial it in. You've got to be, you know, you're a driver, right? So I ran these at 32 because I kept going down, 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 getting more compliancy, more compliancy. And by le looking at this sidewall here, I'm going to say I could actually go, I actually made a note to myself, try 30. I can actually go down quite a bit and gain a little bit more compliancy and, and uh, a little bit of spread on the traction. I kind of kept it a little high because I knew I was going to hot dog it and fishtail it a little bit. And that's always a little bit nicer on your tires. It's, it's just more gentle on them if you don't roll over the sidewall and you don't burn this off. So that's kind of one of those little tricks. <laughs> And the last thing I want to talk about is the sometimes obvious and sometimes subtle tire howl during a corner. This happens when the tires are pushed past their grip level and start to slide and can also be referred to as the tires complaining. I find that you want to hear just the right amount of complaining from the tires to let you know you're at the ragged edge of grip. This turn here sounds just about perfect to me. Too much noise and you're simply tearing your tires apart. And no noise means there is more grip and speed to be had. So remember, a complaining tire is a happy tire. That'll do it for this episode of Auto Edit's Tire Talk. Please hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for another informative video on suspension setup and tuning coming up soon. I'm going to tell you the, the settings that I suggest and remember, enjoy your drive. <laughs>